And we're going to go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray really quick while you guys are flipping there. Father in heaven, we thank you for the word of God. Lord, we thank you that your word is a sure foundation to stand on. Lord, I thank you that... Um, I pray, Lord, according to your word in Colossians, that you would open a door of utterance for me, that I would speak forth the oracles of God, that the anointing would flow, Lord, very freely. I come against any, anything that would try to come against that, Lord, in Jesus' name, and I thank you for your goodness and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So Hebrews 11. Um, we've heard CF talk about this before, about how there are things you should do and there are things that um, you must do. Um, you should uh, take a bath. <laughs> I recommend you do. In fact, I say you must take a bath. But you should take a bath. Or you should clean your car. But you must put gas in your car. Right? If you want to get to point A to point B, you must... But it takes something to go there, right? It takes gas. Um, you don't have to have a clean-looking car to get from point A to point B, although it's nice to clean your car, but you must put gas in there. So we're going to look at the must of faith this morning. We, uh, did anyone think that my husband did a good job last week teaching on faith? Yes. Yeah. He did a great job. And um, so I'm not going to teach what he taught. I'm just going to go from another side of it today. So he, here in Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. It's impossible to please him without faith. Let me ask you this. How, do you, how did you um, get born again? By faith. You pleased him by faith. You got born again by faith. Romans 10 talks about it. It says that you, know, you confess. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. We, uh, my, or CF mentioned last week about confession and believing. How believing in Mark eleven twenty three is mentioned one time, but speaking is mentioned three times. So the believing part is very essential. It's very very important, but the speaking out is just important. Your redemption is within your words. The words that come out of your mouth mean heaven or hell. Amen. Um, but here's the, here's the other thing about that. Just because you um, got born again that way by believing in your heart and speaking out of your mouth, it doesn't stop there. You have to continue to speak things out of your mouth. The Bible says the blessings and cursings are set before you. You choose which one you want to speak. Um, the Bible also says here in Hebrews that, um, that the world was framed by words. So this world that we stand on, you know how it was created? With a word that came out of God's mouth. Amen. Let me ask you this. If you're born again in this place this morning, do you have the nature of God on the inside of you? Amen. Do you look? Do you have DNA, his DNA on the inside of you? Amen. Then guess what? That's how that's, we continue what he's doing. We're his kids. Amen. We're made like him. So we continue to speak things out of our mouth. Do you have creative words, creative stuff on the inside of you to speak words out of your mouth? We're supposed to. You can either speak blessing or cursings, and it's all up to you. So we're going to look at that this morning. We're going to look at, actually what we're going to look at today is God's faithfulness. We've talked about developing our faith, but now we're going to look at his faithfulness. So here in verse 6 it says, but without faith, um, it is impossible to please him. It says, for he that cometh to God. Do you guys know you're supposed to come to God? Not just when you get born again, but we're to come to him. You may ask, how, how often do I come to him? I would suggest every day. Because in Hebrews it says that we come to him, that we may we can come into that throne room boldly, that we may obtain what? Grace and mercy. How many of you need grace and mercy every day? Yeah. Every day of our lives, if you work around people, um, school teachers, you need grace and mercy to have to deal with little kids. You have 
You have to have grace and mercy to deal with my kid every day, Monday through Friday. <laughs> there's grace, sorry, but I missed he's, he's a good kid. <laughs> but there's grace and mercy that you must obtain in that throne room, and that you must, but you have to come to him. And it says that for he that cometh to God must. So this is a really, really important scripture. This isn't just a suggestion. This isn't like, you know, if you want to, go ahead. If not, that's fine. No, the writer of Hebrews said that you must do something. And what does it say after that? It says you must believe. When you come to the Father, you must believe something. Let me ask you this. When you heard that Jesus was a Savior and you came to him to be saved, what happened? You, had, you believed something in your heart. You believed that the person who declared Jesus as a Savior, you believed that was true, so you came to him with a belief in your heart that I'm going to get born again, that he is a Savior, and that now he's going to be my Savior. That was a belief in your heart. But here's the thing. That doesn't end just with salvation. You keep doing that over and over and over again. Remember what the Bible says? It says in Acts that faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's through the word of God that we create this belief system and it causes us to go to him. It creates a belief system on the inside of us. We renew our mind to the word of God and then we believe things in our heart and then it causes you to go to him. Amen? There are things about God that you don't maybe or clearly understand about him. So sometimes, even in those instances, you're not real comfortable coming to him. Um, it, it's kind of like healing. Before you understood that Jesus paid a redemptive price for you, that he died on the cross and he bore stripes on his back for you, before you um, un totally understood the fullness of that, and that was unfolded for you through um, through the Word of God and through teaching and stuff like that. But before you understood to, understood those things, we're all just take me personally. I didn't come to him boldly. I didn't come to him boldly in that throne room obtaining what belongs to me. Do you see that? So when you start to see in Peter where it says that he bore stripes on his back that you might be healed or that you were healed. And then you read in Isaiah where he says that he bore your sins and he bore your sicknesses. All of a sudden, what happens? You get a belief system starting to form on the inside of you. And then what happens? You can approach that throne room boldly. So now you don't go in there very sheepishly and timid and shamefully trying to get some more please healing, please, if it's your will. All of a sudden you start to learn, hey, it's his will that I'm here. It's his will. I see it in the word of God. I see what, Je I see what Jesus said in, in, um, um, in the Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I see what he did. I see what God's word said in Isaiah and the prophecy that was uh, prophesied about Jesus. So you start to see these things, and then you see what the, the book of Acts, how they laid hands on the sick and they recovered, and how they spoke to sicknesses and demons and and casting them out of people, and they went about healing all that were good because Jesus healed all that were good and oppressed with the devil. So you start to see these things, and what happens? A belief system starts to develop on the inside of you. And now you can go into that bold room or that throne room boldly, obtaining what? What belongs to you. It belongs to you. You're his kid. He gave you healing. He gave you provision. It belongs to you. So... It says you must believe something. Your belief system is very important. What you think about the Father is important. It says you must believe that he is. Well, what does that mean? Believe that he is? You must believe that he is I am. Remember whenever God in the Old Testament, Moses says, who do I say sends me? And he said, tell him I am sent me. What does I am mean? I am everything you need. I am your everything. I am your provider. I am your healer. I am your savior. I am your redeemer. I'm the one who will take care of your kids. I'm the one who will cover you with, with my blood, with Jesus. I am everything you need me to be. 
Amen. He is the great I am. Remember when Jesus was in the garden and they came to him and said, Jesus of Nazareth, what did he say? I am. What happened to those soldiers? They fell back under the power of God. Why? Because Jesus was letting them know, I'm going. I've already settled in my heart that I'm going to go. But he spoke, I am. He's the great I am. So you must believe something about him and you need to believe that he is. He is the great I am. And he's everything you need. And it says um, here that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He rewards you when you diligently yeah. seek him. Yeah. You draw near to him, guess what he's going to do? He's going to draw near to you. Amen. He's gonna, and I'm telling you, you don't have to just, it's not a begging kind of drawing. All you do is incline your heart to him. Lord, help me. Yeah. Boom. He's on the yes. scene. Yes. He's on the scene. The prodigal son, what happened? He went through all of his junk. He went through a mess. And what happened to him? It said that he saw his father and he was running down the driveway. And what did his father do? He didn't just stand there and wait for him to come. What did his father do? He took off running. He took off running and he met him halfway. You don't have to beg God. You don't have to beg for him to help you and deliver you. You lean into it a little bit and he's on the scene. He shows up and he's your helper. He's your provider. He's going to do stuff for you. He'll start to move things around for you because he loves you. Hallelujah. So you believe that he is. Believing is a huge factor when you approach him. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? Pastor talked about it last week. What did she do? She believed in her heart something. She believed that if she could get to Jesus, touch the hem of his garment, what would happen to her? That she'd be healed. And guess what Jesus said to her? Daughter, your faith has made you whole. He didn't say, my faith in the power of God that's in me, although it was the power of God that went out of his body into her body and caused that blood to dry up. But it was, it was her faith. What did her faith do? Her faith believed in her heart, and then she reached out her hand. She did something. Faith acts. She reached out, grabbed the hem of his garment. Guess what? That drew the power of God out. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, the power of God is in this room this morning. Yes. But what he wants you to do is hook your faith up to your tongue. Yes. Hook your faith, hook your tongue up to your spirit, man. Reach out, touch the hem of his garment, and receive power into your life this morning. There's power to do things in this place, but you've got to reach out with your tongue, with your mouth, and receive what he's done for you. Hallelujah. So believing is a huge factor when it comes to um, approaching him. I already mentioned this, but in Hebrews 4.16, it says that if you come boldly to him, you'll obtain something. Let me ask you this. When you understood that scripture... Let me read it really quickly for you. In Hebrews 4.16, it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. When you heard that scripture, and, and as you start to understand it, did it make a difference in how you approach the Father? That you don't have to approach him um, scared. There's no reason when he there's no reason at all, but especially when he's your father, there's no reason to be afraid of him. There's mercy and grace. And guess what? Psalms 23 talks about it. There's a table set before you. Guess where at? In the presence of his enemy. You can sit and partake of everything God has for you right in front of the devil. And then you know what you do with the devil? You just laugh at him. Because he's a defeated foe. And God's provided everything you need right there on that table. So guess what we do? We partake. You partake of his goodness. You partake of his mercy. You partake of his grace. And you partake of the food that he has for you. Hallelujah. Healing. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're partakers. Um, let's go back to Hebrews 11. We're going to talk about, um, we're going to just flip the switch here. We're still going to talk about faith. But we're going to talk about his faithfulness here in Hebrews 11. Back in our same scripture. And you read it again. And we're going to go to scoot on down to another scripture. It says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's go to verse 11. It says, through faith, underline, if you write in your Bibles, underline that scripture. It says, through faith, 
What did Sarah do? Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. We know the story of Sarah and Abraham. And they weren't able to have children. And then what happened? God came to Abraham and he said, through you are going to be many nations. Amen. And they're going to be like the sands of the earth and the, and the stars of the sky. What does that mean? It means that he's going to have natural seed and he's going to have spiritual seed. Do you know that you are the spiritual seed of Abraham? Amen. You were prophesied clear back over in Genesis. Yes. You're the spiritual seed of Abraham. Everything, the covenant that... Um, Abraham, Abraham had with God, you're in that covenant. Amen. That's your covenant. Yes. It's a healing covenant. It's a covenant of provision, and it belongs to you. So here, Sarah wanted a child. And we know the story of how Abraham bumped up the situation. And he had Ishmael. That's his name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> got out, got in the flesh a little bit, forgot something. Um, but anyway, he had Ishmael, and he was trying to make something happen. And maybe you try to make something happen with your faith. <laughs> we got too many Ishmaels running around, people. <laughs> and not enough Isaacs. We're trying to make stuff happen, and we create too many Ishmaels. We're trying to move this and do that and, and create this. And God over here is saying, that's not the per my perfect will for you. That's not what I have for you. I've got an Isaac for you. Yes. And it's the perfect will of God, and through this, through that plan, is going to lead you to the next plan. And it's the, and, and it's the provision of God for your life. But but Sarah herself herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered a child when she was past age. Sarah was old when she had a child. Um. So I'm 38. I don't want any more children. <laughs> So I can't even imagine at 90 having a child. That would be a wonderful blessing of the Lord. Let's just <laughs> Praise God. But that's what she wanted, and that was in her heart. And she wanted to have, um, she wanted a child, and God blessed her with a child. But do you know that um, Sarah laughed in her heart when God said that she was going to have a child? She started off in the flesh. She laughed at the things that God said that he was going to do for them. I'm telling you what, you guys, there are things God has placed in your heart that you have yet to tap into. Yes. That if you saw some yes. of it, I'm telling you, you would laugh. Ha uh ha, -huh. you mean I, I'm going to do that? I can do this? You would laugh at that. But praise God, Sarah didn't stay there in the flesh. Yes. She got out of the flesh and came on over into the spirit. And guess what? She conceived a child yes. and gave birth to a child. And through that child, we have Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for Sarah. She came on over to the right side. But it says that um, was delivered a child past age because she what? She judged God. Isn't that an interesting word? She judged God. Let me, let me say this to you. If you ever were to judge God, he's going to come out 100% every time. What did she judge him? What did she judge him? To be faithful. He was faithful. So, so she got like a checklist out. Okay. Well, he took care of Abraham and I when he told us to leave our family and go on over to this other country. Check. He was faithful. He's been a provider for us. He was faithful. He's taken care of my family. He was faithful. She judged him faithful. There are things in your life and if you don't understand, or if, if that God has called you to do, that if you don't understand that he is faithful, you're going to struggle with doing some of those things. It's just like CF going over to Egypt. He spoke that to his heart to go. So you know what we did? We judged him faithful. We judged him faithful to take care of us, to be our provider, to provide money for us, to go overseas. And guess what? God was faithful. Guys, there was one time when I was going to Raymond, it was my first year, and um, we didn't have the money for tuition. And you had to have the money for tuition or you didn't get to go. And so, by faith I went. My body was shaking. I wanted to cry. I did. I sat in that seat and I'm like, Lord. And, and this just proves that 
not every time you're a cowboy, you've got all the faith, because the Bible says that when you're faithless, he's faithful. I wanted to cry sitting in that chair because I didn't have the $1,500 or the $1,200. I can't remember what it was, but I didn't have it at the time to go. And I, but I knew God called me to Ramah. Guess what? He's faithful. He called me to go there, so he's going to provide. That's the thing. Sometimes when God calls you to do something or tells you to do something, don't look at your finances. Don't look at them. He'll fit the bill. He'll pay the bill. Whatever he's called you to do, he's going to pay the bill for you. Why? Because he's faithful. He's faithful to take care of you. So I go into class, I go into orientation that day, and um, see, I've texted me or somehow got a hold of me and said, you know, the mind's not here, and I just said, okay, I'm going to sit through the rest of the stuff, and I'm just going <laughs> to do this. And um, got up to leave get my books because I didn't have my money, went out to my car, and there was money in my little console, and fully paid everything. Someone had transferred, someone back up here in this area called and said, the Lord laid it on my heart to give you, and um, Nicole, this amount of money. Can I have your um, account number? We're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you may. If you ever feel the need to put more money in there, go right ahead. <laughs> we were college students. God paid our bills. Amen. Hallelujah. We had one vehicle. And we needed two. He worked on one side of town. I worked on the other. And we, I, we were going to Tulsa. We were leaving. That day, we'd been married for a couple weeks, and we didn't have, we, we weren't going to go get in a bunch of debt and get a vehicle while we were in school. And as we were leaving to go out the door, someone came to us and handed keys to a car. He said, the Lord told me to give you this car. Guess what, guys? He's faithful. I had two miscarriages before I had Bo, Lucy, and Olive. And I knew that wasn't God's plan for me. So I started digging in the Word of God and looking at what His Word says about. And here I was a, here I was a graduate of Rama, a faith school, and I had miscarriages. It doesn't matter where you come from; it matters where you are right now. So I dug in the Word of God and I looked at what His Word said about being fertile. And I looked in this word about what it means before casting your fruit before its time. And I knew that the curse was. Casting its fruit before it's time. So guess what I did? I came on over on the blessing side. Hallelujah. Yeah. And guess what I have? I have three children that God promised me. And you know yeah. what else? I've got two in heaven that I'm going to see someday. But I've got three on her that I believe that are going to grow up and serve him because that's what I confess over him. But you know what? He was faithful. He kept me. We're at this church. God, is, God has given me promises about this church. God has given me promise about the end time harvest about this church. Guess what? You're all a part of it. Amen. And you know what else? He's faithful. In, um, in Deuteronomy 7, 9, it says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, and he is a faithful God. Amen. Guys, developing your faith is important. I would never take that away. It is important. You must develop your own faith. It is your faith that will receive things from the Father. You can't please him unless you have faith. It says without faith, you don't please God. And so you develop it. You develop your faith through the word of God. But I want to encourage you that you are never to put your faith in your faith. Does that make sense? The Bible says have faith in God. You put your faith in the God that will help develop your faith. You keep your eyes on the Father. and You keep your eyes on Jesus because that's where your faith comes from. So in Deuteronomy it says, Now therefore that the Lord your God is God and he is a faithful God. He is faithful. How many of you in here, God has spoken something to your heart that he's called you to do, called you to say, called you to go somewhere? Guess what? He's faithful. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it costs. I don't care what, what the circumstances are. He's faithful. Amen. He's Hallelujah. faithful. Sarah judged him faithful. Go on over to um, uh, verse 17. Here in Hebrews 11. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 11, verse 17. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. We know this story. 
in Genesis, God told Abraham to take Isaac on a mountain and sacrifice him. I, I don't, I mean, praise God, we have this story, but put yourself in his shoe and think about that. He had two shoes. Shoes. <laughs> Put yourself in his shoes and think about that. Taking your own son up there to sacrifice him. It's just like God. He sent his own son to sacrifice for us. You know, I mean, that took a lot for Abraham. And I firmly believe he didn't tell his wife what he was going to do. Moms? <laughs> Can I get a hallelujah? Because none of us moms would say, go ahead, take my son up on that altar and drive a knife in his car. I'm fine with that. I don't think that's what happened. I think Abraham said, we'll see you later. <laughs> we got some business to take care of. But Abraham was faithful. And Abraham took his son up that mountain. And you could read the account of Genesis, but as they were going, and he had servants with him, and you know what he told his servants? He said, the boy and I are going up to worship, and then the boy and I are coming back down. Amen. <laughs> The boy and I are going up to worship, and then the boy and I are coming back down. And as they're walking up that hill, his son says, Dad, and he was old enough. I mean, he didn't see. He had been doing this stuff with his dad. He didn't see a ram. He didn't see anything to sacrifice. And, and, and Isaac asked him, he said, Dad, where, where's, our, where's our ram? And you know what Abraham said? The ram's on its way. Amen. I'm telling you what, some of you are walking up that yes. hill, and it doesn't yes. look good. It doesn't look good to your natural eye, but I'm right next to you, that you don't see it, but the ram is on its yeah. way. Oh, yeah. It's your provision. Yeah. Yeah. It's your provision. Yeah. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what it looks like. The ram is on its way. Why? Because yes. God is faithful. Yeah. God is faithful. He says right here in, um, back here in uh, 17, it says he offered up Isaac that he had received the promises offered up him or excuse, offer up his only begotten son, verse 18, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be um, called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. Why did God know, or excuse me, why did Abraham know as he was going up there to sacrifice his son? He, uh, in the scriptures, we don't have any account of God telling him anything else. You know what he said? Go do that. But what did Abraham say? We're going up and we're coming back down. The ram's on its way. Why? Because he judged God faithfully. Amen. He said he knew that God spoke to his heart. This is my seed. This is my natural seed. And guess what's going to come up out of that natural seed? Spiritual seed. The seed of Jesus. We're the seed of Abraham. We come from Isaac. And Abraham knew that God wasn't going to take away that seed that was promised to him. That's where his covenant was going to be established, was in that seed. So he judged him faithful. God is faithful. He judged him faithful. And when you understand that he is faithful, you'll never doubt if he's with you. The Bible says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. He is faithful. So if he said, I will never leave you or never forsake you, guess what? You don't ever have to pray and ask God to be with you. Don't ever pray and ask God to be with you. Why? Because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Why would we pray that prayer anyway? He lives on the inside of us. I mean, think about it. God be with us. Why are you? He's already with you. He lives on the inside of you. He may not agree with some of the things you do, but he's right there with you. Amen. So he's faithful. He's faithful to perform the things that he's, he's called you to do. He's faithful to do the things for you. In fact, I felt like this this morning. He's already went ahead. He's already went ahead of you, and he's taking care of some things. All he's doing is waiting for you to step on over into that place of obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all stand.